Good morning and welcome to the Environmental Echo. I am Paul Boyce, your host, and I am CEO and President of PW Grocer Consulting. And we're bringing you guys another uh, fascinating guest and interesting topics to talk about today. We've got Dwayne Gregory, who's a, currently he's a councilman for the town of Babylon. So he's our first Babylon guest, and I'm, I'm real excited to have him. Uh, also joining us, we have Charlie Bartha, who's been multiple times on the show. Um, he's also one of our uh, senior VPs in, in the engineering group, but also leads our business development efforts at PW Grocer. Um, but before we dive into the, the subjects here, uh, let's, let's talk about how to get a hold of PW Grocer if you guys are interested. Best way to reach us is through our website, which is www.pwgrocer.com backslash podcast. So if you guys have uh, ideas or thoughts on topics, um, guests, anything, the ideas or, or other thoughts that you want to bring up to, to our attention or, or things you liked or disliked with our podcast, we'd love to hear it. Um, just reach out to us through the podcast or through the website. And we'll get back to you guys as, as reasonably fast as possible, as, as we always do. So with that said, uh, again, we've got Dwayne Gregory today, who has, as I said, he currently is the town of Babylon. He's a councilman. But before that, and this is how I got to know him, uh, he was a Suffolk County legislator and was served as the majority leader and presiding officer at, during his 10 years in the office, which was fabulous. And he's the first person of color to be elected to these positions in the Suffolk County legislature. So again, tremendous accomplishment. And I'm glad to know him. Uh, Dwayne is a native Long Islander, and he takes great pride in, and he took great pride in leading the legislature. He worked to build an economy and environment to enable the working class to thrive. He's helped uh, revitalize downtowns here in, in Suffolk County. He's invested uh, in, in infrastructure and affordable housing, uh, prioritized, prioritized the fight against crime, and he's keeping quality higher education accessible to all, which, you know, that is uh, critical to the future of the island here. Uh, his career in public service has featured numerous landmark achievements that have included the, uh, the formation of the Suffolk County Land Bank, which I did not know that, and that is uh, something that's been very interesting, and, and PW Grocery has been involved with that as well. Uh, and that land bank, that helps put blighted properties back on the tax rolls, for those of our listeners who do not know. Uh, Councilman Gregory has worked to create policies that inspire change, protect the rights of workers, and stimulated the local economy. In that spirit, he created the Charting the Course seminar series to facilitate, facilitate communication between the business sector and local government. He played a key role in the development of the Marine Industry Revitalization Advisory Council, which we'll have to talk a little bit more about that one because that's 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 new to me on your uh, your resume here, uh, which that that actually promotes and protects Suffolk's 1.6 billion dollar marine industry, which you know as a, as an island, um, <laughs> absolutely critically important to us, and his efforts have not gone unnoticed. Uh, in in 2019, city and state recognized Dwayne as Long Island's top 100 influencers, and also recognized him in its color of power list as one of the top black influencers in New York State, and that's quite an achievement. Very glad to hear that. And Councilman Gregory Gregory currently resides in Copeg with his wife and children, and as I said, also joining us today is Charlie. Um, welcome back, Charlie. Always good to have you. Um, so with that said, with that intro, let's let's dive into our topic. So Dwayne, welcome. Great. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Charlie. It's great to see you and I'm um, excited to be here. We're, great to, we're grateful to have you. So um, as a councilman with the town of Babylon now, you know, can you tell me what are the most pressing environmental issues that are facing the town? Yeah, it's, um, you know, I, it, it's interesting being back in the town of Babylon as a councilman. I worked there probably early 2000s, 2000 to 2002. I was the supervisor, special assistant, and uh, and I went off to the and I was a commissioner, um, deputy commissioner, and did various roles, and went off to the county to do some work, and and it's been great to come back and to be in my hometown and uh, to be a councilman and work with the you know supervisor Schaefer and my colleagues on the town board to do some tremendous things. We have some really great staff that are really. You know, an environment, whether you're in Babylon or Riverhead or anywhere in between, is, is an important issue. So we have some tremendous staff that are doing some some wonderful things. What we've identified is climate change and sea level rise and oh, yeah. nitrogen pollution, uh, potential oceanic and estuary acidification, uh, water quality issues, and loss of eelgrass as some of our, um, you, know, you know, issues that, that we find most pressing. Uh, those are very common topics to, to the island and, and certainly not just unique to Babylon. Right. But what are you guys specifically doing to tackle some of these things? Yeah, so you know, we've been very proactive as it relates to resiliency planning. Um, 
we've received a significant amount of funding from the New York Rising uh, program and carried out stormwater and, and bridge and covert projects. Uh, we've added redundancy to our infrastructure uh, systems, uh, such as emergency generators, uh, installing check valves on our coastal areas um, to address sunny day flooding. We have three certified floodplain managers on staff. Um, they help ensure compliance with flood and resiliency standards. Uh, the town also has uh, staff that sits on both the, the I'm, I'm learning some of these acronyms, uh, CSSER, the South South Shore Estuary Reserve Council and, okay. and, and Technical Advisory Committee, also known as TAC, I guess, for you environmental folks. Um, we've installed, uh, and Charlie and I were talking about this prior to, installed sewers in Wyandanche in the Wyandanche community, which is going to have a great water quality benefit uh, to the Carl's River watershed. So there's a lot of different things that we've done and, and looking to do. And, and um, you know, so we're, we're being proactive and we're trying our trying our best. You know, people uh, tend to think about Suffolk County's environment. They tend to think the East End. Right. But Babylon has so many features there. And as steward of that, you know, I mean, we were talking before about the beaches. Right. Tend not to think of that. And I was fortunate to work on a couple of projects on uh, at Overlook and Cedar. Mm -hmm. And uh, great facilities. Let's not forget Gilgo. Yeah. Right, right. Paul's a surfer. Oh, uh, Dwayne, I'm gonna have you. I'm down there. I don't want to say every day, but certainly every week I'm down there. Yeah, no, the the town is really blessed um, to have some some great amenities for for our residents and, and and for folks who are actually you know come to our facilities as well. And um, you know, so it's it's you know we've recognized as the town government that you know. People want to benefit for their taxes, but also we live on the island, you know, to make sure that they can go to the beach and enjoy the beach and some of the parks that we have. I know the Captree Boat Basin, really, I believe it's a state facility, but is, is that within the township of Babylon? That is in Iceland. Iceland. Yes, yes, yes. So, do you, oh, wow. Do you work in conjunction with uh, Islip and Oyster Bay on the different aspects of We do, and that's, and that's what... Um, it's important on, on, on several levels, you know, with bipartisanship, understanding, having leaders that understand that you got to take a regional approach to things. Um, you know, the waters don't have boundaries like our maps do. Um, so when we work together in collaboration, uh, whether it be with, you know, with the town of Oyster Bay or the town of Islip with Angie Carpenter, you know, we work together and on various things to ensure that we're, our aligned interests are being protected and that we're, you know, making sure that we're doing the right things for our constituents, our mutual constituents. And uh, so, yeah, we collaborate all the time. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's interesting. I've, I've been in a prov involved with a project with the town of Oyster Bay down at Tobey Beach, which West Gilgo is the next beach over. And th there was um, sort of s some shared water services going on there where we had to, you know, speak with the town of Babylon when we right. were doing our project. So, I mean, I, I have seen the collaboration, you know, f right. uh, firsthand. So it's, it is good when I see, you know, governments and cross county governments working together to for a common cause yeah no it's important um you know i i did something similar when i was at the at the legislature the presiding officer after superstorm sandy charlie may remember i put together what we call it the superstorm sandy review task force and um, government's notorious for saying, okay, that problem's gone, it's over with, <laughs> on to the next thing. Uh, but I guess from my military background, we were always, um, you know, we have a scenario or training exercise, and we will always have an after-action review afterwards. Okay, what did we, how did, what was the plan, how did we execute the plan, and what can we do to make sure that we do better next time? So my my, my uh, purpose was to, okay, we went through this. There were certainly a lot of challenges with Superstorm Sandy, but what have we learned? And we'd certainly learned a lot, but how are we encapsulating that so that we don't make mistakes the next time a, a, um, a weather event like that happens? And, and uh, so the task force had public hearings and put a report together and communicated with, with state agencies, local towns and villages uh, across the across the county. But we also reached out to Nassau County and got them involved. So because I mean, so, it's not, you know, Superstorm Sandy wasn't a, a Suffolk problem or no, issue. No. It's a regional issue. And uh, so so it's important to have that type of um, vision and, and leadership and, and, and um, to, so you can get things done in a, in a pro productive manner, I think. Babylon was particularly hard hit by Sandy. Yeah. Um, are there still projects ongoing uh, related to 
resiliency? Yeah, so we're working with Army Corps of Engineers, uh, you know, elevating homes in the 100-year floodplain. Is this um, like down like, like Copeg? Or yeah. So like, the village of Lindenhurst. For, yeah, the particular. South Shore. So Lindenhurst, Amity Harbor, yes. which is, you know, Copeg areas, Amity, village of Amityville areas. Uh, I remember going into um, uh, the village of Lindenhurst, and, I mean, you, you the water had receded at that point, but you see the water marks in the homes are like mm-hmm. six, eight feet in the air. Like, holy smokes, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's sad. And, uh, so, you know, we gotta, you know, protect, do what we can to protect ourselves. And, and, you know, obviously the state is determined to recapture some land as, as, as much as feasibly possible and, and to be smarter and elevate homes. So now that we're, we're almost 10 years after a decade, yeah. since Sandy, and we're, we're obviously, we're still talking about it. We're still feeling the effects how much progress do you think the town has made in those ten years? As far I think as we've made a lot, a lot. Yeah, it's it's um, there's certainly more work to that has to be done. Um, but I think, I think for the most part, the the leadership has, from all levels of government, they're 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 certainly aware of the problem and the potential um, of what could happen, and, and and preparing as best as possible to to mitigate any future uh, potential, um, you know, weather events like that. Oh, gosh, possible. let's, let's you know, let's hope it doesn't happen again, right. but we got to be prepared in case it does, you right. know. So hope's not a plan. We, right. sh- we always <laughs> preach that at PW Grocer, but we sure do, re- we do rely on it at times, um, which I think is great. Um, what, in terms of funding, where has the town gotten, you know, funding resources to, to help with its resiliency and, and uh Maybe getting people to raise homes or a strategic retreat we talked about. Maybe you know the state buying land and and whatnot. You know, is is there still money available to help support these programs? Yeah, we've we've gotten funding from uh, federal or federal resources. Um, we're we're looking for um, you know, you know I'm sure you guys follow you know the whole you know, what's going on in Washington. Oh yeah. Uh, sometimes they actually do get things done. Uh, <laughs> the with the infrastructure <laughs> package. So we're looking to do to address some some uh, some priorities with that as well. We're reaching out to our federal and state representatives and uh, we're open to do some, you know, culvert replacements and safety measures, highway measure, you know, um, resiliency uh, efforts as well and uh, so we're we're constantly, you know, looking for ways to address the issues that we've identified, look for funding sources to, to do that. Uh, we're hoping that that will be a, a source of, of funds to, to help us um, achieve our priorities. All right. Have you, has the town done any road raising type projects? Yeah. So that's what we're, that's part of the, um, what we're doing now. We're actually, Going through some media, I, I was able to attend one meeting uh, in the village. Excuse me, they'll, they'll kill me if I said the village. Uh, <laughs> Amity Harbor. Um, it. <laughs> you know, it was down at the Amity Harbor Civic Association, and you know, it was talking about elevating roads, elevating homes, raising homes. Um, so you know, it's obviously a lot of money. It's millions, tens of millions of dollars to, to do something like that. But yes, we're we're looking at that. We're looking at what resources and funding is available um and, and how to get that done and because particularly in that area, if you're familiar with it it's you have a lot of the you know they're right on the water it's right next to oh, tanner yeah. park they're just west of tanner park and you know there's a lot of erosion in that area um it's you know beautiful communities and and it's you know we we we, we feel for the residents in those areas that you know they they're, they're so close to the water it's beautiful it's scenic and you want to be able to enjoy it. You know, you don't want to have to, you know, you, you, know, you shudder every time there's a, you know, high tide or there's a, you know, r- you know, significant rain event, you know. So we're the trying. The town to- has been involved in road raising projects for years. Yeah. I mean, I first became familiar with them in the early 70s. I was working on the Southwest Sioux District project down in West Babylon, the end of Little East Neck Road yeah. raised. And it was really amazing to watch. I mean, I wasn't involved in that but I was working in the area. So right. there's so many things involved with it. You know, it's not just raising the road and the curves. It's where's the water going to go now right. onto people's property and how are you going to deal with that? Right, right, right. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, but the, the town, my point is the town has been at the forefront of that for a long time and it appears to have accelerated it certainly since Sandy. Right, right. There's a lot of money involved. Yeah, a lot of absolutely. Logistics. Absolutely. 
Huge, huge environmental issue, Sandy. Um, one of the things that I, that I thought was that, that a little bit surprised me is when Sandy hit, a lot of people had boats down there, and they ended up as far you know, north as like Montauk Highway, mm-hmm. you know, uh, but the oil tanks, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people had oil tanks either pop out of the ground or float away, and, and it was a tremendous problem with uh, spills. Yeah. You know, have you guys thought about any of that stuff or you're working with homeowners to, to help them address, you know, how do I make sure my tank doesn't float away if I'm, if I am on oil or. Yeah, no, definitely. We're having those conversations and, and, and to your point, I remember cause I was going in with the Red Cross to provide food and knocking, literally knocking on doors and giving people MREs and things of that nature. Cause they didn't have any food uh, or limited food sources. Um, and I remember walking down, it was a Bayview Avenue in Amityville and, and, and just kind of like out of sorts to, to some degree, just because of the devastation. And I remember walking, I was like, why is there a boat? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Almost yeah. on my talk, I was like, holy smokes, this is crazy. And, um, and you, and this see it firsthand is really devastating. So yeah, so it, I think it touched all of us on a very personal level, even if we weren't directly impacted. And we're doing our best to ensure that our folks or our constituents are are uh, as, prepared, as prepared as possible and that we're doing what we can um, in the town to make sure that uh, people don't suffer uh, unnecessarily. That is excellent. Great. Um, one, one other thing while we're talking about the beaches and the water and stuff, um, something that's been in the paper a little bit lately is Oak Beach. Yeah. Right? Uh, and those people, are there. a lot of them are on private wells or like a, they have a shared private well type of thing for multiple homes. And years ago, PW Grocer, we were involved with some of the lead and copper studies back in the 90s for that for the area and, and whatnot. So we, we are familiar. Um, but right now, it seems like they're having some contamination issues. And, and I know it's, um, it's a concern. And I, I know the town is absolutely concerned about it. So can you give us an update as to what's going on with Oak Beach? Or Yeah, so the, the Oak Beach community, it's, this uh, really affects about 56 homes. Um, you know, it's a unique situation where they, as homeowners, as homeowners, they own the home, but the, they lease the land from the, from the town. You know, they have long-term leases. Um, and as a part of the lease, the leasee is responsible for maintaining the wells. So according to health department um, law, if you have five or plus homes, I think it is, or five or more homes connected to a private well, it's really considered public well. Um, so they, and that was a scenario there. Even though they had private wells, they were really public wells, which subjected them to um, testing by the health department. So about 10 or 15 years ago, the, the county health department was concerned because the, the wells were contaminated. Um, they encouraged them to, to the residents to, um, to make some changes. Um, that didn't happen. And at some point, uh, the, the the town got involved. The county contacted the town and said, "Hey, as the landowner, you guys got to do something, or you're going to be subjected to you know millions of dollars in um, in fines." So uh, last summer, the town uh, we've you know, put together, you know, we got our staff together, put together a plan, um, and uh, you know, it's 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 about an eight. Eight and a half million dollar, maybe eight point eight million. I think it actually project. Um, so we wanted to, you know, reduce the cost to the homeowners as much as possible. So originally, the the estimates are around about sixty six hundred, sixty seven hundred dollar cost for thirty years to the residents. So as a town board, we made a determination that we wanted to cap their cost at fifteen hundred dollars. Um, but we are looking for other resources to help defray the cost. We understand that, you know, $1,500 is, is a lot of money, particularly over 30 years. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was something that had to be done. It's it's actually in the, the design phase is completed. It's under the starting construction, expected to uh, be com- – the project expected to be completed, I think, it's summer of 2023. Wow. So are they – Putting in new wells? Are they putting in disinfection? What, or yeah, there's a combination be a, of both. Or? Yeah, there's going to be a treatment. There's going to the town uh, actually donated some land for for the uh, treatment facility. Oh, great. Um, so so yeah, we we actually have a meeting coming up, um, maybe in the next day or so, um, with some of the residents and, and staff to to address the issue. So we're we're still out there, you know, 
plugging away trying to find some resources. Uh, there may be some monies available from our federal resources, our federal representative, excuse me. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. So then will, will the town be responsible for the treatment system? Like I know like Gilgo, there's treatment. At Cedar Beach, there's some treatment. And, right. and obviously the town takes care of that. Would, would that be the case here or the homeowner's responsible? No, I think it's, I think it's actually the, the county that's going to oh. be. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. So the yeah, because one I remember one of the calls we had the we had a representative I forget the gentleman's name but he was from the Suffolk County Water Authority. Okay, and, yeah, I was going to uh, ask if they were going to yeah. maybe potentially yeah. get involved, maybe yeah. take the whole thing over. Yeah, which is you know it's it's you know if you've ever, if you've ever been it's a beautiful community. It's, oh yes. it's great, and uh, you know so it's obviously you know anytime you talk about contamination, you're going to make sure that it's being addressed. It's being addressed now, and. Uh, I think people understand that, but the you know the concern is how can you do it to you know in a way that reduces the financial burden on the on the, the residents there as much as possible. Excellent. Um, so we, Wayne, we t- uh, Dwayne, we we touched on this a little bit previously. Uh, the infrastructure package from the feds, yep. right? Uh, this is, what are you guys anticipating to see uh, happen with the with the town of Babylon? Assuming this eventually gets rolled out, you know, it's, it's, it's good that it, everything was approved, but we have yet to see um, any money start flowing. Right. Um, right. And the, the engineering industry, the environmental industry, everybody is, you know, trying to gear up for it as best we can. Uh, we're, the industry as a whole is very busy right now, and you're going to throw a, a trillion dollars plus of worth of new infrastructure. Um, it's going to be a challenge. Yeah, how do you find that? I, from I guess from uh, a non-engineer perspective, you know, you always hear the term, you know, shovel ready. Are there is there a trillion dollars worth of shovel ready projects? In there are not. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely not. There, there, I'm sure there's some, but um, there's not all of it. Not even close. That's probably you know I'd say ten years worth of work and investment that would have yeah. to go into to, to doing that, you know. Between Generally, the municipalities or the county would have uh, conceptual ideas and sometimes plans even of projects that they had conceived in the past and mm-hmm. didn't bring to final design. Right. But uh, in some cases, they do, uh, where they had money to invest in the, in the plans. But even so, those plans have to be updated. So, right. like, the right. concept of shovel-ready is uh, a little bit, different right right but um there's there's plenty of ideas out there how to spend the money you know right and i i I mean i know there's a lot of talk about the oakdale merge which is not in babylon of course but um i mean just having a com i was (laughs) i was just having a conversation about that two nights ago the oakdale merge wow that's interesting you bring that's a real big deal yeah yeah (laughs) but um you know thinking about babylon to to my knowledge uh Roads, uh, maybe they need some maintenance uh, overall, and that's a, an issue all around Long Island. But for the most part, roads are in good shape. There's no new whole concepts that have to be done. Right. So you can really focus on, on parks and beach access and those kind of things, I would assume. with your Right. Area. Yeah, absolutely. So so our staff is, um, you know, we're looking at, you know, emergency preparedness, um, you know, Culvert replacements, you know, installing um, charging stations, uh, road improvements. Um, the, the concern, I, won't, I shouldn't say concern, but what you have to be mindful of is you know, when you're expanding infrastructure, okay, is the, there's a funding that's in place to, to build it, but there's a maintenance effort after that's going to, you know, it's going to include more money, budgetary money is going to include more staff and, so it's more than just res- being the recipient of these these monies that are coming. You got to plan prospectively. Say, okay, well, how are we going to maintain it? And um, and 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 uh, so that's an important aspect of it. And we've been we've been really good in the town um, with our budget. You know, we you know our bond rating is excellent, and we're cutting uh, cutting back expenses and debt where we can, uh, expanding resources and amenities uh, where we where we. Where we find that it's uh, advisable, and uh, so it's really been a great experience uh, to be on the town board, and and, and uh, so I'm, I'm I'm having a great time. <laughs> For a couple of years, at least, uh, Babylon has been uh, well, probably the leading township as far as being green, mm-hmm. and what uh, uh, geothermal heating and cooling, which is something you know we're pretty interested in, um, is that any of that being considered 
uh, for municipal buildings or incentives for homeowners? Yeah, I think I think you know I I I remember going to and I forget where exactly it was. So my first, you know, I had never heard of geothermal. You know, probably about six years ago, and going to um, it was a project. I want to say in the town of Brookhaven, um, and I was like, wow, this is amazing stuff. And um, so, so I think what the what the town, county, any level of government, what we have to do is, we have to have planners and engineers and staff folks that um, that are keeping up with the with the technology, keeping up with the times, who are you know, you know, keeping an eye out on our regulations and zoning codes, and make sure that we're we're meeting the the challenge of the time or what's what's available at the time. Because I've seen where it is. Um, the, not to be critical, but just as an example, you know, uh, the county executive was very um, visionary in, as it addressed the you know advanced wastewater system program that he wants to put in place. But the the health department was kind of like, well, we don't know about these things, you know. And, and meanwhile, the county executive was going to I think Maryland and Rhode Island and other places where they were doing these systems. But our statutes and codes didn't really, you know, they weren't really suitable. And, 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 and sometimes staff is a little resistant when they when they don't necessarily know what, what's this about. Um, so I think it's important to have, um, you know, an eye on what's on the horizon and, and have the foresight uh, to change codes and, 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 and things uh, to, to fit that um, because the way things were done, you know, 30 years ago is not the same as the way it's going to be done, you know, 10, 15 years ago, or even today, obviously, um, particularly as it relates to cesspools. Um, oh, yeah. And so we're very supportive, of the, particularly of that program. We're, we're, we're supportive of that. There, if I recall the statistics, about 250,000 homes with cess- cesspools in Long Island, and uh, it's obviously predominantly in Suffolk, right, right, and um, in areas in in Babylon. That's why sewers are so important, like the Wine Ash, North Babylon areas, high water table areas. Um, so you can put a shovel in the ground, you know, eighteen inches, you're hitting water. Um, so it's 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 a challenge, but um, but yes, geothermal is something I find. You know, uh, I'm not an engineer, I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with it. It's, it's certainly something I think that's interesting, and it's the the, the if, if not the future, it's certainly here um, uh, to some degree, and um, we're certainly supportive of that, yeah. Uh, and along those lines, what about, like, solar or wind? Is, is the town interested in those or pursuing opportunities to explore, you know, alternative energy sources? Yeah, I think, you know, I think, w- you know, we're, we're open to it all. As, as I stated, you know, we're, you know, we, we understand the, the national call, um, you know, the president has put on, you know, renewable energy, um, you know, putting it, installing charging stations is, is as I mentioned, is a, is a priority for us. Um, that's certainly going to get less vehicles, you know, fossil, you know, fuels and you know, reduce them, get, in, you know, more electric vehicles. We have one or two charging stations uh, at Town Hall. Um we're, you know, we're looking to expand, and uh, so we're we're you know we're on board. We understand what's at stake. You know, living on an island, having been devastated by Superstorm Sandy, um, having seen uh, you know f- flooding and issues at, that in our South Shore lying areas. Um, you know, we, we understand what's at stake. Sounds good because yeah. it's uh, something that's near and dear to us because yeah. you know we we are like you said we've got the eye on the future. We want to make this place, you know, cleaner, greener, and sustainable for future generations. You know, it's it's sort of our, our mission and, and vision is to, you know, leave this place better than we found it. Right. You know, and, and starting with the fossil fuels and, you know, I, I love my truck. <laughs> 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 but it does like to drink gasoline quite a bit, you know, and yeah. I, I realize eventually I'm going to have to uh, maybe change my thinking here with how I get around town and, and get down to Gilgo Beach and whatnot. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it would be super helpful if I was out surfing for a few hours and I could be charging up my truck while it's sitting in the parking lot at the beach. That that would be absolutely fabulous. Well, that's a, that's a great idea. I'll bring that back. Yeah, yeah. no, that's... We're starting to see uh, towns uh, change standards with respect to parking for commercial buildings where uh, there'll be a certain percentage th- that have to have charging stations. Uh. Uh, and then there's also preferred parking, which a lot of places have now for uh, green vehicles. Okay, uh, okay. So well, that's this kind great. of thing that makes a lot of sense. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, think about it, right? Ten years ago, maybe 12 years ago, when I first came into legislature, you know, to talk about electric vehicles, and, and it was kind of like eh, something you kind of heard about, but now it's it's really, you know, it, you know, if if you don't know someone that doesn't own a Prius or a Tesla or some you know electric vehicle, it's like you know you kind of a little little the odd person out. Yeah. So it's 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 become more acceptable. I think people really uh, have bought into uh, the science and understanding what contribution they can make by you know making a purchase like that. So um, so yeah. So that's so I think part of these things, you know. Because as Paul mentioned, you know, we like our big vehicles, right? So it's like a cultural shift. You got to change oh, people's yeah. mind. Hey, you know, what am I lo- People feel like they're losing something. You know, you're really gaining. You know, so it's and it's for the greater vo- the uh, all. You know, right. the good for all here. You know, the the planet and yeah. all our citizens here as we breathe cleaner air. And you know, you mentioned climate change. And uh, another thing I can't help but bring up, and you know, probably doesn't pertain to specifically to town of Babylon, but all the shark sightings lately. Uh-oh. You know. This is the summer of 2022 here, and, you know, we've had a couple people get bit already, and I've been surfing for over 30 years. And prior to last summer, I've seen sharks on Long Island once. All right, last summer I saw three. (laughs) Haven't seen any this summer yet. Let's knock on wood. Um, But, you know, it's happening again. And, you know, I've read an article in the the paper. They're, well, everyone's attributing to the water's warming up. It's climate change, you know, and what's causing the climate change, you know, it's the carbon dioxide emissions and, and, and all the carbon monoxide and everything else from vehicles and, and fossil fuels. And you're right. It's got to be a cultural shift. Right. Right. You know? yeah. and, and maybe it's because of all the good things we've done that there's more fish and they are chasing. The, the that was in the in. article too. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. And every time I see a school of bunker by uh, my backside puckers. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, yes. But it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, and also along the lines we were speaking a little earlier before the podcast, you know, I, I brought up municipal solid waste. Um, this is an island wide problem and it's going to be a big problem real soon. Yeah. What is the town of Babylon doing? It's at least, thinking about this or planning what do you guys what's bothering the town about this and what, what can what can you do about it yeah no we we understand the uh you know what's at stake and the regional issues we're you know we're following the different you know proposals that are going on and uh, so hopefully there's there's a, a long-term solution here because you know it's it's not going to pile up in everyone's front yard you yeah know? So we, no, we, we got to do something yeah i think from an environmental perspective i think from a from a governmental perspective you know, you don't want, you know, it would be a nightmare. I, I remember the barges, right? You know, we all remember the barges. Oh, yeah. It would be a nightmare if garbage is, you know, we have, you know, we have that scenario again. Um, and, you know, it, you know, th- there's been open discussion about what's going on. The Brookhaven uh, landfill is closing at a, at a certain date. Um, so we, we, we have to know, we already should know, we know what the timeline is. So we should be, um, proactive in trying to address it as, 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 you know. Well, Babylon early on built an incinerator and right. had, uh, had, or I don't know whether you still have an Asheville, whether it's active or not. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, when, when you, as a, you know, Typical homeowner, you don't think about okay. I, I put the bag out, to the, the pail out that's to the it. front, and that's it. that's in the yeah. my responsibility. It magically well, disappears. It just disappears. <laughs> a, a orange, green, or blue truck may come by and pick it up, but um, yeah, it's it's you know it's serious, and it's not you know it's it's not just something that Babylon's concerned about, no. or even Long Island. It's, it's all across the the country and the world, and um, so we have to be. Come together, uh, all the stakeholders, and say, well, you know, what's the solution? And, um, you know, because it, it's going to, you know, a nightmare scenario think, is, is on th- the horizon. As from the environmental standpoint in the industry, I think we're all very anxious to find out what that solution is going to be. And I, I don't know if we're there yet, you know. It's, right. And the deadline, as you point out, keeps getting closer and closer. Right. So it's going to get... Uh, Get a little sweaty around here. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I've spoken to some people over the last few months who have different processes that they are uh, proposing for some aspects of it. And I've heard from these kind of folks for years when I was at Public Works with, you know, sewage sludge and those kind of things. Mm-hmm. But they're making the point that what we're doing is making our problem everybody else's problem. 
mm-hmm. uh, by getting it out of this region by truck or train and or filling boat, in old barge. mines with it. And, right. uh, you know, and that's even happening. Uh, that's a problem now that a lot of people don't realize that milling streets uh, and taking that material, when they started doing that, that was like a great idea. And we could, you know, recycle that material. Very small percentage of that material gets recycled. Mm-hmm. And it has to be, a lot of it is being taken by barge upstate and filling in old mines, mm-hmm. um, which is adding a tremendous cost to, right. to paving that people didn't think about. Right, right. So there, there's, there's always consequence. Right, right. Yeah, I, I think, you know, when it comes to things like that, we have to really start thinking, okay, like you said, you know, we don't want our, you know, our issue to become someone else's problem. Uh, how are we thinking in a more global perspective and how to, you know, do the, address these issues that we, we can, there's no way to avoid it, but how do we handle it and manage it in a better, more environmentally sensitive uh, you, way? You got me back to that old slogan, um, think globally, act locally, right? Right, uh, right. Absolutely. So along those lines, what's what's the town doing to encourage, like, recycling and reuse or repurposing with, with for its residents? So you guys, do you have any programs? or? Yeah, we have a recycling program. Uh, we're also, uh, speaking of uh, Winter Brothers, uh, they, you know, we have an Earth Day um, yep. uh, program that we do. It's been suspended for the past couple of years. They actually fund a scholarship. So we have local students that, that, that participate and they get a scholarship. So we're encouraging our students to, to be more envir- you know, um, uh, educated about the environment. Um, you know, for years now, um, it's, you know, the, the town, I think the town has really been um, a leader, you know, and, and, you know, even dating back to the days of uh, County Executive Blum when he was supervisor, you know, bringing on the, the Long Island Green Homes Program and, and encouraging residents to, you know, with energy efficiency. Uh, but our recycling, you know, we, we have a recycling plan. I just put out my pails yesterday. Um, <laughs> uh, I think it was, I forget if it was a uh, plastic day yesterday. Um, so, yeah, so absolutely. So we're, so we're trying to do our part. When it's collection like that, is it town metal glass plastic or is it all separate? It is... Paper and glass and plastic. Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's convenient for the residents. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. a little more in difficult. Brookhaven, we on can't the rec- put out our glass anymore. You're supposed to bring yeah. it to a regional center. Ah. Uh, okay. But it really is more than just the town. It can't. It's got to be done on a on a bigger level. Right. And right. even even bigger than the state. And you, you, just in the last few years, uh, so many people are ordering things. Right. Mm-hmm. Amazon and it gets shipped <laughs> in boxes. Oh, brother. But there's been a, a big improvement on how things are shipped because now they're coming in smaller cushioned bags a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and we, I, I was seeing a tremendous amount of cardboard <laughs> at my mm-hmm. house. And, it, you know, they, they send a, a, something small in a big box. Right. Yep. Right, never right. figure that oh, out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but now they're coming in, in, you know, smaller plastic things. And sometimes it is recyclable uh, fiber. Right, you know? right. But... It's really got to be done at a national level. Right, right. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially during uh, the pandemic, you know, you would have thought if we were running like some warehouse operation, it was like we had all these packages. My wife went crazy. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of, you know, cardboard, and, and but now I, I've seen the, the transition too. I just yeah. got a package yesterday. I ordered a book, and it came in like a little, you know, plastic pouch, if you will, and uh so yeah, so it's you know, I think, I think we can't afford to to not be at least have some level of education on what's going on with our environment, so that we can all play our part, even albeit a small part. Um, so so yeah, so 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 that's why I think we're you know, I'm I I, I like to to get our children involved, and I think that's why the Earth Day project and that the the scholarship that we the, um, that went to brothers provides is because i've been to those ceremonies and it's great and the kids are really excited yeah. it's at our town hall park and um to get our next generation more excited and educated about it and and a lot of times they know more about it than our the parents do because they learn about it in school yeah bringing that ho- information home but to, and that's the way it's got to start this it's not gonna it didn't happen overnight it's right. not gonna be solved overnight. right it's a generational thing. now well I, I just recently learned you know you can recycle the aluminum foil that you use uh-huh. I, I was watching whatever it is, Cheddar One or something on, on Optimum or Altice, and 
Really? So I started doing that, you know, uh, as long as it's not too slopped up with like the burrito yeah. that I took. Yeah. Off right. of, but <laughs> you can right. crumple it up or fold it up and put it in with the recyclables right. as aluminum, like the can. So I actually I've, I've actually started doing that now. Wow, I actually cool. remember from school that uh, aluminum is at that time was uh, one of the most recyclable materials uh, as far as because they, you know, they can heat it up. Yeah. And, you know, it takes a minimum of uh, effort to be able to reuse aluminum. So yeah, you learn things at the, at my advanced age. I'm I'm still. Uh, you know, it's, it's good. It's really good. No, There's I'm, hope for you yet, Paul. Uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, uh, you know, just to wrap up, um, Dwayne, do you have anything that we didn't cover that you'd like to to, to mention to the listeners or to, to any any topics of? Uh, yeah, no, thanks. I, I appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Uh, one thing we had talked about prior to to coming on was um, the the Suffolk County Land Bank. Yes, that that was um, something I had some involvement with doing. You know, the, the what I what I found was um, you know there were we had at that time about eighty eighty four you know, properties throughout the county that we um, determined through some means that was contaminated. But we didn't want to assume the liability by t- and a lot of them didn't pay their taxes, mm-hmm. uh, which through county law will allow us to to take those properties and, and sell them. But if you take possession of them, uh, that means you're, you're going to be liable for the cleanup costs. And so we kind of had a hands off approach, and it wasn't just Suffolk County. You know, it's, it's it, it was, you know, it was a, a kind of a liability prone um, position. Uh, but the the state law change, which allowed us to start you know, um, selling the rights to these properties. Um, so we've worked with the uh, local investors to to take control of these properties, get them cleaned up, and now we're revitalizing, you know, downtowns and local communities um, that probably, you know, wouldn't be otherwise uh, revitalized and cleaned up because of the program. So, so and those properties are staying on the tax roll, it the, sounds like. On the tax roll, yeah. That's and, a big and, thing. The, the number of thirty million in and back taxes was and we recouped I remember a few years ago we were up to like maybe fifteen million of that thirty oh, wow. million we recouped. So so once people started getting those, hey, we're gonna we're serious, we're gonna take your property from you it was mm-hmm. at first they were like, Yeah, yeah, yeah and then people started showing up and they're like, Oh, okay can I get into a payment plan? <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, so we're getting monies, for, which is good for the taxpayers, but more importantly, uh, cleaning up these properties that Absolutely. are just. I'm, I'm so glad yeah. you brought that up. As, as I mentioned, that's something that, you know, our firm has been involved with with the county for a number of years now. And it, and it is a really excellent program to, to, to incentivize and get these things cleaned up. And it's a, a, a tremendous victory for the environment, yeah, in my, yeah, my opinion. Absolutely. Yep. So. I appreciate you bringing that up. Charlie, anything you want to add before we close yeah. for the day? No, it's good. All good. Well, then again, I want to thank uh, our Councilman Dwayne Gregory for joining us today, uh, taking the time to, to spend with us, and hopefully our listeners have enjoyed and uh, learned something from, from the conversation. And also, Charlie, thank you for coming in. As always, you're always a big help on the show. And to wrap up, again, I'm your host, Paul Boyce, CEO and President of PW Grocer Consulting. And to our listeners, thank you for joining us here at the Environmental Echo. And again, lastly, to reach us, www.pwgrocer.com backslash podcast with any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, topics, or even future guests if you guys are interested. And with that, we'll sign off for the day. And I appreciate everyone's time, and I hope you, lo- hope you enjoyed listening. Thank you. <laughs>